Okay, for the five minutes of instructions, remember all that you have done so far. We've already practiced lots of loving kindness whenever you've been doing any type of meditation. We call it kindfulness. You're kind to your body, you're kind to your mind. You don't ask so much of yourself. You're just so grateful your body and mind could cooperate and sit here for every day of this retreat. It's been a long retreat, and you've all done very, very well, even though when there's been problems with so many people coming here in the evening, with parking, with no water, and you've done a wonderful job. So always speak very grateful for your body and mind uh, to have allowed you to come on this retreat. And also that you know, there was always the problems with COVID, but apparently only three or four people had to leave because of COVID, and all of you managed to stay here. Well done. A lot of times I always feel the mind is so powerful that if you do have a strong mind, your body can uh, be kind to you and good to you and not have any symptoms so you can actually stay here. It's much better to wait until you have to go to work before you get COVID. <laughs> <laughs> But anyhow, I do hope that you've learned a lot and what you have learned and what you have practiced. Feel very, very grateful for that. It's an amazing thing to be able to learn meditation. The best thing which I ever did was to learn meditation. And little by little over the months, the years, that meditation, it doesn't fade away. It doesn't get worse. It gets even better. So you become more skilled in your practice of meditation. And that is just so very, very helpful, no matter what you ever do in life. This is a kindness to you. And I'm very happy to have been able to teach as much as I could in order for you to learn those first steps of meditation, the second steps of meditation, and go so deep into the meditation path. Now just look at Venerable Kaisi. I've known you for a long time. When you first came to these retreats, you didn't look like this. You were very serious. <laughs> but now he laughs a lot. Would you prefer him to be like the old Kaisi who didn't laugh that much? No, it's much more a good example of what happens if you practice meditation and do the Dhamma. You become so happier and such a more wonderful friend to have in this life. So the instructions for the future are just keep meditating whenever you can. I've already mentioned to you there's opportunities, there's always opportunities you can take. And even if you're in a noisy place, I always say just to imagine a bubble around you. And that bubble is your private space. And inside that bubble, like being in a cave, you're not concerned with what other people are doing. I've done that in so many places in the world to try and test myself out to make sure I can still meditate in the most noisiest of places. One of those places recently was in Suwanabumi Airport, in the arrival lounge. I had to wait because some more people were coming in the following flight later on. So I said, where would you like to wait? I said, right here. Just in the arrivals um, place where so many people were walking around and, and noise going on all the time. But I could still go into a nice meditation there by imagining a bubble and going inside of it. So wherever you are in your life, Please remember, it may be noisy, you may have a, an ill body, a sick body, but it doesn't really stop you. If you're skillful enough, you can learn how to meditate anywhere. And I know that because I've done it, and I'm not special, I'm just a monk. I've told you some of the stories of when I grew up, just an ordinary human being who learned meditation, had the good fortune to learn from some of the best teachers. One of the things which they taught me was how to practice loving kindness. It's very easy to think, oh, may all beings be happy and well, but it's got no power yet. I always compared like loving kindness to be like this fire, this flame which can warm the hearts of the coldest of people. And to be able to build that fire up, you cannot get a piece of wood, light a match and think that wood will take the flame. You start with something which is easy to take the flame. Use paper. And if you take paper, you put a match to it, the flame starts. 
And before that piece of paper is burnt out, then you put on little twigs. The word in English for that is kindling. And I kind of like kindling because it starts with the words kind. And from the kindling, the fire builds up its heat and you can put bigger pieces of wood on. And then bigger pieces of wood, bigger and bigger, until you can put the logs on the fire. Once the logs are on the fire, it gives out quite a lot of heat. But you don't stop there. Once the logs have taken the flame, then you put the wet logs on, the damp logs, the big logs, which usually is so hard to take the flame of kindness. But those wet and sappy logs, that refers to some of the enemies you have in life. People have hurt you. People have done some terrible things in their life. They can't just put a match to them and think they can take the flame and start uh, burning. You need the easy stuff first, and it builds up the heat, builds up the heat, builds up the heat, until even the wettest, sappiest logs can take the heat and burn. All those people you thought it's impossible to give loving kindness towards. Just like that nurse when I had a scrub typhus injecting me once every morning, once every afternoon in my butt with a dull needle and that really hurt. But after a while you, know, you can give loving kindness to anything once you build it up. And that means you have a beautiful way of spreading loving kindness to everybody, even old boyfriends, ex-girlfriends, ex-wives, your boss, politicians, everybody. May all beings be happy and well. It becomes natural and powerful. So this is what we're going to do. Many of you have done that with me before, so many of you know what to expect. So first of all, if you can sit comfortably on your cushion, or on your uh, mat, and I can lead you in the loving kindness meditation. We might just go over for two or three minutes because we're starting late. But as a monk, I have to eat before noon. But noon is always solar noon. And solar noon in Penang is past 1 p.m. So if I, you see me eating late today, I'm not breaking precepts. I know the precepts really well. As long as it's before the solar noon. So here we go. So sitting down, close your eyes. And if we're going to do loving kindness meditation, one of the first things we have to give loving kindness to is our own body. So just like you give loving kindness to a little animal, there was a, a cat uh, here, and actually a cat in the place where I'm staying this morning. Little cat, very scared. It's wonderful to give loving kindness towards it. If you don't like cats, dogs, teddy bears, sometimes imaginary beings are much easier to give loving kindness towards. But I know some of you don't like cats or kittens, but I've had an affinity to them. So I'm always feeling that I'd like to start my loving kindness meditation with a little kitten. So with my eyes closed, I imagine going for a walk one day in the afternoon, alone. And as I'm walking, I can hear this sound, not too far away, but it's a very sad, melancholy, painful sound. And I can't figure out what it is. But nevertheless, I follow it to where it gets louder and clearer. And then I can feel it's coming from a dark corner of an old building. And when I go closer, I can see these two eyes poking out from the darkness. I'm not scared. Compassion is more powerful than any fear. And I realize that's coming from a small kitten. I can imagine, and it's true, what happened. 
that small little cat, kitten, has been abandoned by its mother for some reason. There's no one to look after it. Every time it's sought for friendship or kindness from anybody, it's just been bitten and scratched and had to run away for its safety. And now it's hiding in this dark corner, almost without hope that could get someone to protect it and feed it. That little kitten without a mummy must be so hungry, must be so thirsty, so afraid and cold. And I look at its eyes. Right now as I'm meditating, I'm imagining I'm seeing this little cat's eyes in a corner. And I spread my loving kindness to this imaginary being. Little kitten, please know that I will never ever harm you. Please give me the opportunity of caring for you, healing you, feeding you, giving you the best milk which I can save from all these other people who are giving me milk in the morning. Dear little kitten, I do care for you. And I spread that loving kindness with sincerity, as if it was a real little being suffering who I've met. And because I give it such loving kindness from my own heart, I can see those eyes emerge from the dark corner a little bit. I can read its mind, it's not hard to do. That little being is hearing me, seeing me. Can I trust this bald-headed, brown-robed being? I can feel some of the kindness coming from him. Is it real or another trick? And I assure it, little kitten, it is my privilege to help you. Please allow me to care for you. And the eyes come further out from the darkness and I can see its head. It is a little kitten, a little ginger kitten. And I can see on its fur that little being hasn't been cleaned or washed. Unlike other little cats or kittens, it has, it's not smooth fair. It doesn't know how to lick itself clean. In fact, I can see some of the fur all matted. Something is making it stick together. And I realize it's probably blood, its own blood from the many cuts and scratches and bites is received when it tried to trust somebody else. Dear little kitten, I will never hurt you. I won't harm you at all. I'm here to protect you, to clean you, to help you grow, to help you become as fat as I am. Dear little kitten, I care for you. And I imagine when I say these words of loving kindness, which I make up, I don't repeat things in Pali, that little kitten can't understand Pali. I just say them from my heart. You don't need to feel afraid. I care for you. And I imagine that in my heart area, just the skin above my, the heart in my body, when I do this, it begins to tingle. I'm generating energy of loving kindness in my own heart. As I spread it out even to an imaginary being, that loving kindness affects the skin around my, and on top of my heart. And I can feel it tingling now. And the energy from my own heart passing through my skin, I Shower that, bathe that on this little imaginary kitten. Little kitten, may you be well, may you be happy, may you be well fed, may you run around 
like every other kitten. Dear little kitten, I care for you. And I imagine the little kitten coming further out from its corner. I can see its whole body now. <coughs> and it's true. It is so thin. You can see the fur just clinging to the bones of this little being. I don't know when the last time it's got something to eat. I can also see many of the cuts and scratches on this body. A poor thing. Hasn't had any kindness or love in so many days. Little kitten, the door of my own heart is fully open to you. I don't care who you are or what you are. Please come in. I will care for you. I imagine stretching out my hand towards it. And as I stretch it out and the hand gets closer to it, I have to be so careful. If I move too quickly, that cat will probably run away. It's beginning to trust me, but the trust is just so, so fragile. So I go very slowly until I can reach and touch that kitten's fur. It's true. It's dirty. It's full of scabs of blood. But I don't care. I just want to be kind to that little kitten. It lets me touch her. It lets me put my hand under its belly so I can gradually, so delicately lift it up. It's easy to lift up. It's hardly any weight at all. I don't know when the last time it had a decent meal, but it was a long time ago. When I lift up his body, it lets me, surprisingly. It's got, it knows that I won't hurt it. It trusts me. And I lift it up and bring it to my chest. And when it's close to my chest, all that loving kindness coming out from my heart towards that imaginary being, the abandoned, hungry, painful little kitten, all that energy can just bathe right into it. And I imagine the energy, and I always see this energy as a golden light coming from my chest. That golden light goes right into the center of its little ginger body, it goes to its tail, goes to the, the tip of its hind legs, goes to the front of her body, down to the front legs, up again to the head, to its little ears, down to its nose and its little whiskers and its eyes and its mouth and everywhere. I bathe it with my loving kindness. And that little kitten receives it. I can feel it as I'm holding it next to my chest. I can feel it relax. All the tightness was, which was in its body at the beginning has all been abandoned. It's, it's loose. It trusts. It realizes it's found a friend who will always look after it. And so I cuddle it to my chest. As I'm cuddling, it closes its eyes. That's how much it trusts me. And I'm sure that I can hear, I can hear it purring as it takes a rest. It's hungry, it's dirty, but it knows it's found someone who will look after it forever. Dear little kitten, I will always care for you, even when you grow up to be a cat. I will care for you. I'll make sure you get well fed. I'll make sure you'll be safe and have a nice little place you can sleep peacefully at night. You have friends. Me. And as I send out this loving kindness from my heart to this little being, that loving kindness as a golden energy, as a feeling, becomes so strong. 
I've generated strong loving kindness to my imaginary primary object, a little kitten. And now is the time I change the object. I recall someone who's very close to me, someone I care for. I really want them to be suffering back in Perth. And I just want them to be receive this loving kindness. Dear friend, I do care for you as well. Wherever you are, however you feel, may you be well and happy. May you just know from this golden light which I'm sending you now, all the way from Penang, that you have people who care for you, even though they're a long way away. May your sickness heal. May your feelings of, of psychological pain get less, knowing that there's somebody who thinks about you. May you be at peace, may you heal, may you be strong enough to withstand many of the sicknesses and diseases and the bad words of others in this world. I imagine this being a close friend I imagine them like standing in front of me. And I just bathe them with the rays of loving kindness coming from my own heart. I really care for you. I don't know why, but I do. May you receive my loving kindness. And I imagine the rays of energy from my heart going to them. Distance is not a problem at all with loving kindness. I imagine bathing, letting the golden energy go up to their heads, down to their feet, across to their fingertips, right throughout them, up and down, all over, healing, taking away pain, taking away emotional disturbance, giving them peace and happiness that someone cares for them. And then when I bathe that one person, then I let the image disappear. And without opening my eyes, I imagine you, each one of you, sitting in this hall, who I've been associating with, talking with, telling jokes to, teaching, interviewing, for the last eight days. Dear fellow meditators, I care for you too. I've known many of you for years. You're like family, honestly. And so when I think of you with my eyes closed, it's easy to spread loving kindness to each one of you. I imagine these rays of golden light build up in my heart area inside my body and burst through and go to every meditator in this room, every person in this room, going into your chest, up to your head, down to your feet, to your tips of your fingers, all over, through all parts of your body. My dear friends in the Dhamma, I care for you. And I feel that your loving kindness is starting coming to me as well. As we share our loving kindness to one another, filling this room with this beautiful golden energy of metta. May all beings, our friends, companions in the Dhamma, may you all be at peace. May you all understand the Dhamma. May you all get these incredible jhanas. Don't be afraid of them, please. They're gorgeous. They're healthy. They're part of your journey to full enlightenment. And I say that because I care for each one of you. Please receive that kindness and give it out to the person sitting next to you, behind you, all around you. May all beings in Mahindrama Meditation Center, be at peace, be free from disease, be f full of energy 
of kindness, see the benefits of helping others and helping oneself. May you all be at peace. And then you change the image because the golden light of loving kindness is too great, too strong, too powerful to stay in one room. So at this point I imagine this power of loving kindness going out over the balconies, through the doors, through the windows, to everybody in the neighborhood. Going to Mahindra Rama Meditation Center. People there are going to have their lunch soon. Sorry I can't be there with you today. But I thank you all, every one of you, for the kindness you've shown me. And whatever loving kindness I have, I'm going to bathe my Hindurama Buddhist temple with that kindness. I'm going to bathe the Triple Wisdom Hall with that kindness. I'm going to be bathe the whole of Penang. I don't care whether it's a Buddhist temple or a mosque or a church. If it's a place where there's no humans, only animals, birds in the sky, animals which crawl underneath the soil. May all beings in Penang and all the fish in the waters which surround Penang May you all realize that somebody is thinking about you right now with beautiful, kind thoughts of loving kindness. May all the people in the hospitals find their pains get a little bit less because there are combined loving kindness going out towards you, even though I may not even know you. May all the beings, their fevers get less, their bacteria, the viruses, their wounds, may the wounds heal faster. May all beings in Penang Island, may you all be happy and at peace. Just like the sun shines on all beings without discrimination, we here in this room do not discriminate against anything May you all be at peace and free from fear and happy and enjoy this moment, not least of which because of the loving kindness and power and energy we give you. I always notice the more loving kindness I give, the more powerful it becomes and the more there is to give. So I start extending that loving kindness to beyond Penang, over to the mainland, to Butterworth, down up to the whole of Malaysia, down to KL, to Johor, to the eastern part of Peninsula Malaysia, over to East Malaysia itself, to Sarawak, and that big coast there. May all beings in this locality be free of fear and suffering. You're not alone. Lots of people are caring about you now. Let this golden energy go even further up to Thailand, down to Indonesia, down to Australia. I've got lots of friends who are missing me. I'll be there soon. But right now I send my loving kindness, first of all, all the way to India, to China, Hong Kong, all over the whole world, spreading from Pilupinang, all the way across Asia, India and Iran, even to those countries which were at war, which were afraid every day whether this moment might be their last. May all beings, may you feel this loving kindness. When you feel this loving kindness, not to react out of fear, but to spread that kindness to your neighbors, even though they may be of a different nationality, 
a different religion, a different politics. They're humans just like us. They're beings just like the dogs and the cats and the birds in the sky and the worms in the ground. We're all beings in this neighborhood, in this in Asia. May you all be at peace without fear and free. Feel free to give and trust others, to help each other, to share food, share laughter, share water, and share joy in this world. And let that loving kindness, that golden energy spread even further like a blanket, getting bigger and bigger until it covers the whole planet Earth. So all of my relations over in, and friends over in uh, UK, so all the people I know and care for over in Europe, and the people even in Africa, spent last weekend with one of my great friends, the African monk Buddha Rakita, and all his friends, colleagues over there. May you all receive our loving kindness, even in this great continent of Africa, and over in the United States, all over the whole world, not just West Australia, but the whole continent of Australia, having very severe storms over in the East Coast, and New Zealand, may the people in the whole world be warmed and healed and find peace from our loving kindness. And once I've covered the whole world, all beings with no exceptions, only then do I realize I've missed one person out. And that is me. For you, it's you. That person who bears your name. The person you've known all your life. Imagine that you're looking at yourself in a, in a full-scale mirror. That's you there. You deserve your loving kindness too. Whatever mistakes you think you've made, whatever fault you are so aware of, whatever bad luck you've ever experienced, look at this being who bears your name and say, me, I do actually care for me. Any mistakes which I have made, I will learn from them. I will take them as a teacher so I can be a better human being in the future. So I can serve and care for others more efficiently, more effectively afterwards. I care for me. And it's like you spread this loving kindness from your own heart back into your own body and mind. You can feel the energy just going down to your legs and toes up through your arms to your tips of your fingers, up throughout your whole torso and your head. You may feel tired, but that energy just goes into that brain. It's beautiful energy. And it cares and recharges your mind and your brain. May I be at peace free from sickness or ailments. May I be kindful and at peace. May I understand the Dhamma. Allow that loving kindness to go right up and down you. You can imagine it as this healing energy. Never question is this real or not, that spoils it. Let it be imagined and it is real. How do you feel? All things must come to an end, but we want to end them gently. So imagine that blanket of golden energy, golden light, withdrawing, shrinking, coming back into Asia, 
but leave the warmth out there, just bring back the light. As it comes into Asia, it comes into the country of Malaysia, as it zooms into the island of Penang, as it comes in to Mahindarama Meditation Retreat Center, as it comes in to the top story in the meditation hall, as it fills this room with its power, as it withdraws into your heart, imagine it's a beautiful, incandescent, energized little ball of light, an essence of loving kindness, just hovering, hovering in your chest above your heart. Imagine your heart like this beautiful, open, white lotus. The only thing pure enough to hold that energy. Is feel, imagine that incandescent, powerful ball of loving kindness energy resting above the center of that open white lotus. And the lotus petals slowly closing around it. They close around it for the only purpose of keeping it safe in your own heart to be used another place, another time. Please keep your eyes closed. Because now I'm going to give you the final blessing. Sabasantapawajito Sabaweramati Gando Nibuto Chatu Wangbawa Sabiti Oviwa Chantu Sabaro Govina Satu Mate Bowan Wantarayu Suki Digayu Gopawa Apiwadan Hasilitsani Chang Wutapachalino Chataro Dhamma Vatanti Ayuvan Rosukhan Balan May all be well and happy and healthy and at peace. Unfortunately, the retreat is now over. Thank you all. Ah, ah.